what would be your explanation for that? So what is, what is this source of, of, of the black and black crime on, on the poverty within, within the black community and the fact that social mobility seems to have, economic mobility seems to have gotten stuck within, within these black communities. Although of course, Tanny Hassey is an example of somebody who has risen above that, who has, who has been very successful. He's, he's phenomenally successful uh, right. in spite of where he grew up and how he grew up. Well, I think part of the problem really had to do with the, the rise of welfareism uh, in the post 60s era, where we incentivized uh, black women in particular to, to, to get married to the state and the breakdown of the family, the family unit, uh, which disincentivized fathers from taking responsibility for their children. Uh, there are just certain pathologies that are embarrassing to talk about, but that are endemic, not irrevocably so, but that are endemic to the black community. And I think the promotion of welfareism where you incentivize people, whether they're black or Hispanic or what, poor whites or whomever, to, to, to marry the government and to not, you send a message of victimology and you send a message of, more importantly, of entitlement. Mm -hmm. um, communities begin to break down. People begin to think that they're not responsible for their lives. Um, um, and this is, I think this is part of the problem. When you look at the thriving communities, not to say that there, there wasn't abject poverty under segregation, but when you look at like the Harlem Renaissance, when you look at communities that in the deep south under segregation, this is not a call to go back to segregation at all. Nobody would want such a society, but you had minorities thriving and living, uh, even poor, poor blacks living dignified lives, sending their children to school, um, supporting themselves um, because there was basically no welfare. Uh, this is before, and you know, I'm talking about the 1940s, 1930s, before the rise of the welfare state. Um, so I think that there are um, certain, the absence of certain values, the absence of uh, an emphasis on education, for example, that is, that is very, very lacking that you find in other, in, for example, immigrant cultures, in Caribbean cultures, in the Jewish culture, in, in Asian cultures, where there's a strong, no matter how poor you are, there is a strong emphasis on educating oneself, getting an education. I had to work up to three jobs to put myself through school. I worked 45 hours, 45 hours a week wow. and, and went to school full time and graduated magna cum laude. And it didn't matter that I came from a middle-class family. I came to America with $120 in my pocket and started, okay. from, started from scratch. Yep. Yep. But there has to be this burning hunger in your life, a vision for your life that the state cannot give you. There has to be. And, and I think that the, the, the black community, unfortunately, has been betrayed by its intellectuals. So, so many of intellectuals have, have in, you know, because it gives them a position of power, have insisted that the state is the solution to every one of the problems, that the yeah. state, and, and that, like Tani Hassey does, that the, state's, the state is, is, the, is uh, both our, our friend, because it's the savior, but it's also the enemy, because it's oppressing us, and it's that, that combination constantly. They've all been, you know, kind of nutty leftists, unfortunately, so many within that leadership. Yes, I think so.